Hello there, Ferret fans. Today we're here at the Peace Statue in Brighton. And behind me, you can see pulling up a bus. Now, this bus is specifically for it's reaching out to the homeless community here in the city of Brighton Hove. And as you can see, it's a big orange bus. Um, this is all supported by the public. Um, and we're going to get on the bus and uh, we're going to have a look around and find, what, find what's out there because you people out there can do this with a bit of public will and a bit of um, community spirit. We've done it here in Brighton so anyone can do it. So let's go have a walk down Rossi. Let's see what's going down. Yeah. This is with Jim Deans here on the bus. This is really exciting. So Jim, Jim, can we quick word? Yeah, mate. Um, how did we get this together then mate? Uh, so about eight weeks ago I met this crazy guy called Guy and he went, we've got a bus. Yeah. I said, I, when I said to you, don't drive, you've had too much to drink, have, get a bus. I didn't yeah. mean get a bus. <laughs> so we've got a bus. Yeah, and, and, and we're going to look what's on side there. Um, well, come on, everybody's going to come on board, see what it's like, see what we've done. It's not finished. No. But it's good enough for tonight. It's a start. Well, yeah, what do you rather do? Do you rather sleep in a beach shelter and die, you know, across, or would you rather sleep in a nice warm bus? And that's it, and it's because reaching out to everybody around the city in all parts of the city. Yeah, cool. That's, that's, I mean, it's amazing. When you see it inside it... Oh, I can't wait to get on him here. Ross, can you get on out? I cannot say how proud I am of the guys who have done the job. We're proud of you, buddy. We're proud of you. Come yeah, on, anyway, Ross, should we get on, mate? All aboard. All aboard. So we're going to now get on the bus. So now we're on the bus, we snuck on. Come on, Ross. So you've got the cab, which is a basic driver's cab, as you can see. Um, here we've got batteries. Um, oh, there's Mo's cake. There's Mo's cake. You've got tea, you've got coffee. It's all there for them. It's all there for, for everybody. These are the beds. These are beds. If you go up. These are beds. We're going to do that, sweetheart. So let's go down here first. Yeah, can we? So these are beds, Ross. Like in like a naval ships, really, aren't they? That's a good idea. Ah, oh, mate, look at the TV. Ross. Oh, Rossi, come up here, mate. Look at this. Have a look at that, Rossi. Look at that. Look at that telly. And that, that's wonderful. So we've got facilities for it, for entertainment. We've got a toilet on board as well. That's absolutely fantastic. That seating area, and I discovered I can lay on that back shelf and watch the So look at this, Ross. Look. I mean, you've got a DVD player, and oh, that's fantastic effort. It really is. Should we pop upstairs, mate? Have a look up there. That's a toilet. That's a toilet. Is it? What's that? A chemical toilet? Get it. Stuck now. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's have a look. Yeah, you do. It's like a tour bus for rock bands. <laughs> look at that, man. That's perfect, isn't it? Yeah, it will get smelly, but that's what you get clean it out for. We, we've, I'm, I'm sure people are prepared to um, accept that. So here's the beds. So how many is this berth at the moment? Um, 12, 12, 10, 12. 10, up 10 upstairs. 10 upstairs. So that's 12 in total. Oh, look at these, Ross. They're brilliant, aren't they? Yeah. Talk to the viewers, nice. Yeah. You've got the pillows as well. You've got the pillows. Right, we're just putting the finishing off the lockers. There's so we're a... lockers so people got a nice, secure place to They're prepare. locked when they come on at night, and yeah. we hold the key, and we unlock them in the morning so they can't take nothing out of their bags wow. overnight in case they've got stuff they're not meant to be well, on the bus. really thought of everything here, really, didn't you? Changing room at the back. There's a changing room at the back. There's a changing yeah. room, so they come on wet. They can change and dry clothes before they go to bed. Oh, that's brilliant, mate. You fall everything here, ain't you? Really? We've got two chairs at the front where they can sit and read if they don't. Of course, all this is generated by batteries, these lights and that, isn't it? Yes. All generators and batteries, everything. What's your name, darling? Sharon. Sharon, I'm Kenny. This is Ross from True Fairy Films. Um, I think you've done a magnificent effort here. Really, oh, I'm so impressed. All the bottom, they're all bunks, and they've all got curtains, so they've all got their own personal privacy. space yeah. and privacy to do with. So it's, it's very similar to what they're doing in the Royal Navy. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. I think that's the best use of bus space I've ever seen. I really do. <laughs> We have catered for absolutely everything. Yeah, we have catered for absolutely everything on board. Everything. It needs a bit more doing to it, but in general, 
Yeah, you keep driving people off the street and take lights and that's what we're doing. You're getting this sound back? Yeah, brilliant. This is what we're so doing. So we're getting people off the streets. Now that, and that is the fundamental role. Can I tell you something? That's the truth. My car's parked over there. I've had a homeless person sleep in my car all day in a very bad way. I tried to kill myself last night. And he's asleep in my car now. And I will transfer him from that to this bus tonight. And that will save his life. So it's not one of the It really is that simple. It is that simple. And, and, and how did you get this? I mean, Jim passion. got this organised. And obviously you got on board. Yeah. Uh, without one of any no pun intended. Um, so how did you get on board with it? Is it social media, is it Facebook, um, or, or did you find I it? work for Help for Veterans, um, and there's so many veterans on the street. 30,000 we've been told. I, got, I met Jim a couple of years ago, and I'd done some work with him. Um, my friend died of cancer, so I'd come away to look after and take two of our kids on, and then I got a phone call out the blue last year, the end of last year, to say there was a veteran really ill. Yeah. And that's a veteran in my car still to this day. So that's an army veteran? Yeah. But I work with all people. I'm on the street every night putting out sleeping bags, bivy bags, talking to people, the soup kitchens. I do everything with them. Yeah, uh, everything. You're, you're a good woman. You're, you're a saintly woman, darling. How unfortunate. But that veteran, see that? It's 13,000 in my business. I know. 50,000 in America. And by law, he's entitled to a place because he's served his country. Oh, absolutely. He's taken the king's shilling to serve Queen of Country. So yeah. Ill. He's so ill. Last night, he was trying to kill himself, and I was out after night. Oh, something falling down. Yeah. And, you know, and this morning when he woke up and he called me, I was there straight away. He's been sleeping in my car all day, and that's where he still is now. Oh, that's disgusting. See how people. Soon he will be on this bus tonight, and I think I'll have him sleep now, and he's safe on this. So bus. that's wonderful for you. That's wonderful for him. But take these people, veterans sleeping homeless on the street. Disgusting. In this day and age. Well, Should you get off, Rossi? Do you know he didn't even get any help until I took him to the doctors, and I and insisted. There you go. The doctor said come back in 24 hours. I said that well, okay, got 24 hours. Five minutes later, they gave an appointment only because I was with him. Because you were persistent. Him on his medication. Good for you. Well, for you, yeah, we might not have lasted 24 hours. Yeah. And that's he's it. still asleep yeah. in my yeah. car. Yeah, he's still he's still snoring, oh, he's said, right. oh, bless him. See, this is community spirit. They say community spirit's dead. I don't think so. No, it's not. It's I don't think so. Look at the community. Yeah, here, boss. Yes. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. So we get a word with Mark in a minute. Who are you with a veteran? What's your name, my friend? My name is Nick Zaver. And, and what's, do you just tell me about your organisation? Uh, I'm the chairman of a charity called Where Do I Belong Here for Veterans? And we started this about nine years ago. And what we do is we look after veterans who suffer from mental health, homeless veterans, and uh, veterans who need any, any form of help. Are you a veteran yourself? I'm a veteran myself. So did you serve the British Army? I served in the British Army. Uh, what was British? British? I did the first parachute. You were the para? Yeah. Wow. The wow, proper soldier. Look at that, man. The real, the real deal. That's our logo. That's the logo, mate. Look at that. Yeah. Help for veterans. That's always, always a good shit. It's a good thing, man. Well, exactly. We, we want to work with him so, you know, that we can bring the veterans in here and we can sort things out with the veterans. Yeah, yeah. Because veterans are the more homeless for us. Do they do entitlement to some attendee? Yeah, exactly, they do. But the thing is, they go to places, especially with people who suffer from mental health. Yeah. They go to places and they tell them, okay, you wait down the four, five, six hours. Head starts going, they woke up. Yeah, yeah. And if they start feeling forms up, they don't want to fill up too many forms, they don't want to give too many details for a civilian they don't know. Yeah. So we are the ones in between. So they come to us, we will fill all the forms for them. Yeah. And then we will support them. We will do all the doctors work and all that for them, and then we'll pass them on to different agencies that are there. So you, you're basically a hub in which they can come and you, you put them into the right areas. Yeah. It's easy, isn't it? It's really that easy, isn't it? So, um, we are based in uh, Sackville Trading Estate. Sackville Trading Estate, yeah, which unit, is in Hove, yeah. Yeah, Unit 8 Sackville Trading Unit 8 Sackville Trading Estate. Yeah. So we, if we find any veterans, we will point them in your direction. Please do. I'm going to say, 13,000 homeless veterans in this country is ridiculous. That's enough for you, bro. I say, I don't know how many of them are but I do yeah. know. There was a report in the uh, Sunday People the other week that it's 13,000 homeless veterans. This is great, so that's one to five thousand. Why are they in the street? 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 Why are Stuart is working with me, he's not a veteran, right. but he's a civilian who's working with us. Good man. And the thing is, none of us get paid. No, we all volunteer. No, volunteers, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We don't get any funding. No, we use people care. Yeah, we don't need funding. The, the money I use is for my own mortgage. 
Right. Well, you use your own pension, man. Right. Right. So I use my own pension to fund the charity. Wow, that is tremendous. You don't get even the funding for this. Well, we'll, we'll, what we'll do, we'll get this film out there, and hopefully, we'll get you aware into, into yeah. the community, and hopefully, we might start getting you. Yeah, have a look at our website. We it's, will do, definitely. It's www.helpforveterans, one word, yeah. .org uk. Brilliant. And we'll, we'll and put Sharon, that. Sharon has got uh, my business going on. Sharon's got your business, we'll, we'll, we'll grab one. Thank you, well, thank you, my friend. Oh, very well You're sharing You're very welcome to come down and see us. Oh, man, but listen, we will do. Can we come round and see us? Yeah, yeah, please point? come down. Come we'll go down, down there, but we'll come down and see us. Come, come, come down and see us, definitely. We'll do, my friend. We'll yeah, do, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll yeah. arrange that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll arrange that. Anyway, I yeah, think, yeah, take yeah. care of it. You're very so welcome. Mean, thank you. Veterans. Veterans. And, and people volunteering. Why are the government doing this? It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Okay, so here we're with the lovely Maria Garagotch. Um, and you know a lot about this, but so why don't you tell us exactly what's going on with this? It's taken them about eight weeks so far to come up with this. When they first started, when I first saw it, um, they've changed it around completely. They, before, they had like bits on two sides, so there wasn't really enough room to manoeuvre, so it was felt a bit. So in that space of eight weeks, they completely gutted it and transformed it into what we have now. So I'm not sure how many sleeping pods there are. There's, there's, 11, there's 11 beds and it can take 12. Yeah. So the upstairs obviously for the rough sleepers, then you've got a downstairs bit here uh, where there's space for the staff to sleep. Uh, we've got the toilet there, uh, there's a shower, there's a little communal area where people can sit there and watch the TV which is powered by the generator. I think we're actually linking up with um, anti-freezer off the fence to do a washing facility programme where they're going to come in and plug in to the I know that off the fence do do that, yeah. yeah. So people can wash their clothes and stuff. And I just think it's remarkable what they've done in the time scale that they've had. Like, the, the volunteers on this, they have worked day and night. They've not gone home, they've slept on the bus, they've had no sleep whatsoever. And this is a result of it. The community shouldn't have to do this, but we do because the you know the council just aren't doing enough. You know, I mean obviously they open up the Brighton Centre, but that's only going to be until what March, and everyone's out back on the street again. And then we go, hey, nothing's done again until next year. This is 365 days of the year. This is what we want. And of course, you can get out to places like Port Stade, or all places like that. Yeah, necessary. so we can move, move it yeah. around. It's a murder. Because we've, we've got hundreds of them in, in Port Stade, and it doesn't get addressed really because it is on the extremity of Brighton. Like, um, we've got people living in tents, so you know. It's, well, it's, yeah, that's why we've got different groups now. I mean, we've got Sloan that's doing um, um, Hope and Tea. She does like um, Hay Barrier. So there's people branching out more and more now because there's so many homeless people, and obviously with the PSPO, the anti. Um, uh, section 36 and stuff, they get pushed out of the uh, town, don't they? So it's fair to say that the public are pissed off with the way that the council are trying to criminalise homelessness. Yeah, and we've oh, tried to work know. with them for some And that's what now. motivates this sort of uh, arrangement. It's injustice, it's essentially injustice. I feel, I was born and I've lived here all my life, right? And I've seen this get worse and worse and worse over the years. To the point now that we, the community, have to do this. The council do nothing. As for the government, don't even go over that lot. But Community spirit is alive, and it's a good thing. And if you can tell people out there um, how to get this organised, we do Facebook, we that sort of thing. But it's about getting together, isn't it? It is, and also, I mean, we have had some support from councillors, like Councillor Tom Druitt, who we know very well, yeah. uh, David Gibson. There's a few others. So we are starting to engage with the, the councillors. I think the councillors are more up for it than the council. To be quite honest with you, council is where we get stops you know like when we go to the home okay you know housing committees once a month um i think this should be should be done all over the country yeah. you know if they won't give us the spaces they won't open up all these bit empty buildings then we need to get clever and find new ways of doing it and this is a perfect opportunity to do that let's get so. a fleet of them around the country yeah yeah let's get a fleet of these around the country let's have going everywhere we should okay. need them this should be funded by the government or the councils, but yet we, the taxpayers, are sucked dry and we have to do this. But this is the magnificent thing, not just the people of Brighton and but the people of this country, is that togetherness, strength and unity. And we're getting there, gradually, bit by bit, we're making a difference. And your local media out there, place, but the Argos are pretty good with that. Yeah. Tell, they? they had a story next day about a parrot yeah. living on the streets. That was awesome. So the Argos are really good, and local papers around the country are doing similar good stories. So, Keep your eyes on social media. The mainstream ain't telling you. 
You keep rolls of people like Maria here and, and Jim. And what's yeah, going on go with to buzz? the Sussex, Sussex Homeless Support page. There's a donate button. Press the donate button and your money goes towards projects like this. There you go. Don't fund the big charities, fund, fund these people. The money goes where it's yeah. supposed to be. Little charities and the grassroots organisations. Yeah, That's the, the, where it's at. And that is it. And this is it, you see. It's the money you give to those big organised charities. A lot of that, I think it's about seven pence for every ten pence you give them goes in administration costs and things like that. I know from work to save the children. Everyone that does this here works for free. Works for free. Time for free. So everything about this is free. So the people that worked on this for eight weeks have given their time for free for nothing. And so I think they deserve a run. I'll tell you what, they deserve a any dish at these gongs like sirs and all that, they deserve a lot, that's right. Yeah. They really do in my opinion. Your monarchy all sit there doing fuck all. And geezer, geezer serve queen and country living on the street. Man. That's how fucked up it is. I know, post traumatic stress disorder, can't get back to their families because of things they've seen that they've done. 13,000 of them, 13,000 hundreds just too rot. It's unbelievable. 50,000 in the States. Queen of Country, what's that about? Take the King's shilling, serve Queen of Country, there you go, mate. On the streets you go, fuck that. So a message to the young'uns then who are thinking about joining right. the army. Well, we'll so say. this is what that they can expect right. and this is at exactly the end of their tour. Yeah. I, this all's going to skip round to this is about the fact that young people now don't want to join the army. And why should they? Why would you want to go over to, go over to Syria or Iraq, fight a war for those lemons up in London, when all they give you is a well, bus. Well, well they don't give you a bus. We we provide the bus. They give you nothing. And that, and that is the argument. They don't even give you a bus. They won't give you mental health treatment. They won't give you medication. They won't give you shelter. They won't give you anything. And of course, because NHS has been cut uh, the funding to mental health uh, issues, soldiers are going under the radar, man, onto the streets. It's disgraceful. And I think the government needs to get act together on this and start funding mental health services properly again. Because to have 13,000 veterans on the streets of this country in this day and age is a fucking disgrace. Hey, my name's Kenny for True Fair Films and you are? Steve. And Paul. And you've helped to get this together. I mean, what have you yeah. done to help I've, I've come in uh, near the end, uh, I've, but he's been working on it for the longest time. I've uh, done a lot of the carpentry yeah. and uh, I've just driven it here for one. I just saw you drive it. Yeah, <laughs> And just delivering some of the last minute stuff that they couldn't get on the bus before they left and uh, I've been helping putting curtains up and stuff like that today. Wicked, wicked, that's yeah. about it really. <laughs> oh, well, well done lads, thanks for your help. And um, message for that, uh, can they do it? How can they get about doing it? I mean, people watching this. What, about getting a bed you mean? Or? Well no, just getting this together, it's uh, getting organised. Oh, um, you have to talk to Jim. Best I've done that, I've done that. But, so you got organised across social media, or take it, Facebook or something like that? All I've done was project manage yeah, the tail end of the vehicle. Yeah, we're more sort of hands-on, practical stuff. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks a lot, lads. And what, your contribution here is priceless. Yeah. It really is. As a citizen of Brighton, I'm telling you that. Quite wait. Right, eight weeks, hard work. I did a little bit. They did a whole lot of hard drank work. a lot of tea, that's what he did. He drank a lot of tea, yeah. <laughs> Where's Guy? Guy, he come in. Got another sponsor on the phone? Come in. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. No, you, you do, you do. Alright, you ready? I hear declare the Titanic, uh, the, uh, the bus. <laughs> Welcome, have a look.